Let's hit it. Uh, start the clock. Pull the tape. Play the music. It's a special edition of After the Movies on a Tuesday uh, because <laughs> because I watched the movies in the wrong order. Uh, and we never announced what the movies were going to be, so surprise, if you read the title of this episode, we're talking about Christopher Nolan's uh, groundbreaking pandemic film that is grossed, that was a box office disappointment, but has now grossed more money than any, any other movie during the pandemic. Hennet. And it, and, ET. and it really doesn't matter when we put them out, you know, everybody should just expect Tuesday or Thursday, you get to listen to us talk, and that's really it. That's all that matters. That's all it is. That's all, all it is. We're talking movies, regardless. And now we can give you the special heads up that on Thursday we will be resuming our independent feature uh, show season for At The Movies uh, with Resolution. So, the 2012 film Resolution, uh, directed by... You can find that on Prime, too, if anybody needs to figure out where is to... Is it stream. on Prime now? Yeah, it's on Prime. You can... Nice. You can rent it, or you can watch it with commercials. It's up to you. You get to decide. I should... I, sh- I, uh, I really should know who directed it. I don't know why I'm blanking on this, because it's like two brothers. The Joel and Ethan Cohen's 2012 debut film, <laughs> Resolution. Resolution. Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead, um, nice. who also are in the film. As uh, this movie is hard to explain, and today's episode is not about it. But uh, we'll just—it's there's UFO cults, there's uh, bizarre things happening in the woods. Um, that movie is hard to are... follow, but not as hard to follow as this one that we're talking about today. Uh, great, great transition. Um, yeah, let's talk Tenet, because I want to know what your thoughts are on Christopher Nolan stuff outside of uh, this movie. I thought I thought I liked so like obviously his movies are always weird and they feel like you're watching a video game. I don't know if like if anybody feels feels like that. Can you like let us know? But as soon as this film started, I was like, oh, yeah, his films feel like they're video game cutscenes. Like it's like you see it and then boom, there's action. Then you get to play in it a little bit, and there's like these weird transitions in between it. That was the same way with Inception, which was an overall a good movie. I liked it. Um, very comparable I, to this, I would say. Inception I like Inception is very similar. Yeah, it, like it don't like it looks the exact same as Inception. It feels like it feels like they just put new characters in the Inception world almost. Uh, all of those Dark Knight movies were good. I enjoyed those. Um, but I'm really, really on the fence with this movie. Like, not in a good way either. But <laughs> <laughs> on the fence, but not in a good way. Yeah, it's heard just, it here first, folks. It it was like the strangest experience. Like, I really enjoyed the story. I thought it was cool. Like how everybody was inverted and things, things that were happening. I thought that was cool. But then it all, but also the same thing that I thought was really neat about this movie also lost me. Like some parts when they were doing this were so confusing. And then keeping track of who actually was backwards and who like wasn't was tough to follow sometimes. And I know we're going to talk about it and we're probably going to talk about it for a long time. But why in the hell is the audio so bad in this? <laughs> yeah, it, uh, you can't hear anything some of the dialogue. Like you can't hear them uh, talk at all. Pretty much. It's bizarre. And that's a complaint that I read about the movie, actually. Um, I... Yeah, I don't know about Christopher Nolan. I love The Dark Knight. I love Batman Begins. Um, Dark Knight Rises a little bit less uh, than the other two. But, um, Mm -hmm. you know, all right. I like Bane. Um, Did not like Interstellar. uh, In a hotly uh, controversial topic amongst my friend circle. Yeah. Um, Did did not like that movie. I don't think I watched it, to be honest with you. Well, so it's kind of weird because it's kind of a similar problem I have with this. I would say, like put all this work uh, in Interstellar. They worked with NASA to create the most realistic black hole possible on film. At the end of the film, spoiler alert, uh, he ends up like tapping into the power of love 
to like to like travel through time. Like he gets sucked in the black hole, but like he uses it, it ends up being not scientific at all. And mm-hmm. so like I was kind of like, why would you go through all these lengths to make a very like scientifically accurate film up into a point and then kind of like throw that away? And so with this one another high concept movie that's very interesting but i think that it pardon my french i think it gets up its own ass a little bit in trying to explain like how and why everything works and then i read on wikipedia there's a whole section for scientific accuracy where he said we're not trying to be accurate with this one and it was like okay so then why did i just spend 20 minutes listening to these people do technical jargon about a thing that doesn't really add to the story. Like, all I need to know is, like, oh, so they're able to go back in time. And they make a point several times in the movie to be like, it's not time travel. It's actually reversing the entropy of an object. And you're like, all right. And they're like, but we are going backwards in time. And you're like, okay. So you are going back in time. And they're like, no. Uh, no. That's not it. Uh, you gotta have you have to be going forward and backwards at the same time, and it's just kind of like. Nah, nah, nah. Was it just me, or did you feel like at, like so at the beginning? I thought only like three people knew about this tech. Like it seemed like a very small group of people, and then as the movie like continues, it's like the whole world knows about it. It's like a hundred and fifty thousand people know that you can do this, and at the it's beginning, a secret society at first. <laughs> yeah, and then it just then it's like, a battlefield full of people. Yeah, full of people going backwards and forwards. That was which that was pretty cool though. Like seeing people it's... like go back, like that was cool. I really enjoyed that, which is why I have a hard time like really shitting on this movie because like the parts that were really cool were really cool, but the parts that were bad were like really bad. It was just like a roller coaster. I just remember watching it and going, "Wow, that's awesome!" And then I go, "What the?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, that's cool." And it I'm is... like, "What the?" Yeah, it it um. The visuals are amazing. Music, despite the audio issues, the score is really cool because they reverse sections of the score during parts of it. Um, It's too loud, though. It's too loud. The score's too loud. It was good, but it's way too loud. And that's the Christopher Nolan thing a lot of people make fun of as they talk about how his movies have that, like, all of his trailers have the... uh, And it'll, like, fly to be like, this Christmas. Uh, a new film from Christopher Nolan. Uh, and like things are happening on the screen. Um, and yeah, I don't, this movie, I also kind of feel like, I don't know if you felt this way. I kind of feel like this was a normal spy movie with like, not like this stuff was just added. In. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now that you bring, bring this up, something that I want to say, it felt like a James Bond movie. With with like an added twist, like it was the same. It was the same thing, like the spy who falls in love, but like doesn't really fall in love. And then it's a yeah. it's that spy love story. But there's also like the Russian villain. Yeah, there's a villain that who, and maybe I lost this, but like wasn't there another villain at the beginning, or was it him the whole time? That's something that like I kind of I thought there was like another there was another bad guy, and then like the true bad guy showed up. Which I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Where'd the other guy go? Well, they went to find the arms dealer and then found out that the arms dealer was actually the woman and not the man at that building. And then she sent them in the direction of the Russian guy. Oh, that's but then true. and they're partners for a little bit. And then they're not partners anymore. Mm. I will say, um, I don't like I'm not shitting on this. I, I would say that I probably liked this movie more than I didn't. So I'm not trying to be hard on this movie. Um, that being said, it didn't pass the Jimmy Sniff test of, I, so like I watched it and it got to the point where there was a logical conclusion to things. I think it was like before she was shot. Yeah. I was like, okay. Like, I was like, all right. Like, I kind of see where this is going now. I paused the movie. Wouldn't you know it? There was an hour left. Same. Oh, dude. Dude, dude, we did it at the same time. We did it at the same, same, yeah. same time. Cause like, you know, uh, we've talked about it before. If I have to check and see how much time's left, not a really good indicator that I liked the movie, but I remember at that same point I checked it and there was an hour left. I go, I can't believe there's still an hour left of this movie. Like I just, I was so shocked. And I remember saying to myself, there's an hour left, same exact spot, same exact spot. And I, I even feel like 
I do feel like, I mean, I do feel like they use the time wisely. Like, there's, it's not like there's, like, a lot of, like, wasted time. But I think with an editor, a stronger editor, this thing did not need to be longer than two hours. You know, you could have trimmed half an hour off of this pretty easily, I think. Um, if I had a nickel, this, this bugged the crap out of me. Yeah, I'm going to keep saying this. I like the movie. It's easy to point out things I didn't like. Because I'm, again, I'm not, like, crapping on the movie. I didn't enjoy it. But there's this thing where the main character, protagonist, as he's referred to, would talk to someone. And they would explain something to him. And then he would say something to himself. So she would go, be like, why are the Russians after this? And she'd go, well, they've had a secret deal set up with Ukraine since 1985. And then he would say, mm, betrayal. Or he would be, or they would talk like Robert Pattinson's explaining how the time travel thing works and why it doesn't work this way or that way. And he goes, like pissing in the wind. Mm -hmm. He would just like say things to himself. And I was like, I noticed it and then I couldn't stop noticing it. It just kept happening. Um, you know, it's interesting. Think, it's interesting you said uh, with the stronger editor. I think, it, I don't think it was the editor's fault after looking into some of the. So this is the same editor that was on Hereditary and Midsummer. So I think that those Midsummer's a bit lengthy too, but I do think those movies justify their length a little bit. More. So, so I almost wonder if this was like too many hands, no, too many hands in the pot. So I think you know where I would cut out a lot of stuff is the exposition in the beginning. I would cut out first... about twenty minutes in, and then about an hour and forty-five minutes in the middle, and then <laughs> <laughs> then wrap it up. <laughs> like, why did I need? To, like, what did Michael Caine even do in this movie? Dude, Michael I... Caine showed up. Listen, I on Wikipedia, he is listed as starring in the film. Michael Caine... I got Michael Caine for one day. It feels like it was like shot, a commercial. It felt like he was shooting a commercial. <laughs> they shot one scene with him that was totally unnecessary. It's a lunch scene. Well, that's and, what I mean. It didn't make any sense because you have the CIA guy that gets him after he, like, quote unquote, dies. And then you have Michael Caine. And then you have uh, the Indian lady who's part of the other. There was, like, so many bosses. There's, yeah. So the first hour of this, I guess, my issue with it is, like, pacing. Because the action is great. When the action gets there, it's worth it. But the first probably 45 minutes of this film is almost exclusively him talking to somebody who tells him he needs to go talk to somebody else. Then him traveling, talking to that person, they say, okay, you need to go talk to this person. And you definitely could have. That's what I that mean, down. dude. It's a video game. His movies are like a video <laughs> right. game. You're like going on quests yeah. with the main character. You're like just watching a video game for three hours. It was like quests. It was like, honestly, in his films, they should just start putting quests achieved. Like, right at the bottom. And then you're like, next quest. So everybody could follow along. Be like, oh, he's on his next quest in this journey. That'll be nice. Yeah, I agree. Uh, let's say some things we like about the movie, because we have been kind of... Yeah, we said we were going to shit on, on it. it. And then we, both, we both like it. And yeah. there, here's the thing is, I think that it's uh, the purpose of this podcast, uh, you know, especially when we're covering, like, big movies like this. Like, we're not going to hurt Christopher Nolan's feelings. No. And we're both saying that this is, like, a pretty good movie. Nobody that so Christopher Nolan even knows that knows somebody is ever going to hear this yeah. ever. Uh, nor should they even care because we're we're two people just giving our opinion on a movie. Um, but I will say so. Like aside from the visual effects, aside from the music, um, I thought the performances and the casting were very good. John David Washington is is uh, the lead. He's Denzel Washington's son. He was in Black Klansman. Um, he was a former running back, and I think he does an excellent job in this role. Likeable, um, charismatic, I think, when he needs to be. Uh, he definitely gives off leading man energy for somebody who doesn't have that extensive of a film history. Uh, and I also think Robert Pattinson is just getting really good at being like a, a chameleon. Um, so, th and so that's interesting. I would say that yeah. I that's a part I liked all of. I liked all of other performances uh my favorite was from cat on um, elizabeth debicki that was DeBecky, my yeah that was my favorite performance in this whole she entire film i think i think she did great 
I don't know if it's just because like Robert Pattinson has that like Twilight vibe still like with me, and that might be why I'm a little bit more critical on his performance. I liked it, but I didn't love it. I think is where yeah. I'm at with it. He uh between this and between like Good Time and uh he's now going to be in Batman. Um he seems to be doing a lot of different things, which I think is interesting. Like I think that whereas and it's not necessarily his fault, but I think you see Daniel Radcliffe these days and you think that's Harry Potter. Yeah. And I think that Robert Pattinson maybe hasn't escaped that yet but i think that he's on the path to being more than just the twilight guy if he keeps doing ambitious roles um so kudos i would say yeah that's true i i agree with you i think cat cat was the best elizabeth uh debicki i think was probably the standout performance in this movie for me um very yeah, she was great compelling performance for someone who is in an abusive relationship and has to decide between uh, giving herself peace and potentially like ending the world, mm -hmm. which is a really fascinating balance. Yeah, she made us the you know the uh, the ultimate decision to mm. potentially kill everybody on the planet or find peace. Thankfully, she was able to do one without uh, the other, but it was right. kind of like it was it's... a nice little. It was a nice little situation to put her in, and I felt like she did a wonderful job in that situation. I do think, um, I think the idea of the introverted stuff is great. I think the visuals are great. So every time you see the birds flying backwards, you know, you see vehicles going backwards, that stuff is really, really cool. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the purpose is of, like, what the benefit is of, like, this technology in terms of, it certainly wouldn't make it easier to fight or kill someone because you have to line them up with a bullet hole that already exists and <laughs> pull the trigger so that the bullet will come back through them. It's a very bizarre, um, I found, like, I understand the ultimate goal of the thing, which is, it is kind of this thing of like, they took the long way to just be like, yeah, they just want to destroy the world. Yeah. Like the, 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 the end goal is just to, to reverse the world and so that it'll, everyone will die and they really took the long way to explain that yeah the um, one thing uh, the one thing that i will have to say and i'm going to give christopher nolan credit on this is like typically now like when you see films like this even old like what we talked about last or a week before last that's not really an original like screenplay that's you know adapted from a graphic graphic novel the one thing i'll give nolan credit on is the fact that he wrote this himself which i think is really cool like this wasn't from a book this was like, this is something that he worked on. It said for over a decade, so like that's pretty cool. Like I, I like will give him that credit. I think I think that's awesome. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. And I think for him, writing and uh, directing it, I feel like he did a pretty good job. But there's just obviously length, and we talked about sound and stuff like that. There's some things that I definitely hate about it, but overall, like not a not a terrible film. I think you it's kind of this thing where it's like, if you get the good, you have to take the bad because mm -hmm. when a person lab labors over something for so long, of course they're going to want final cut on their film. Like they're going to want, you know, if you took 10 years to write the screenplay and who am I to tell you to take out some of the technical jargon or cut it down by 20 minutes. Like for him, that's his project. He wants to put it out the way he intended. And so, yeah, for that point, it's like hats off um, for sure. I would like I said, this was an enjoyable experience. There was just a bunch of times where I was scratching my head and just, it's funny because somebody who's been watching the movie for an hour and a half and Jess comes downstairs and goes, what's going on? And I was like, don't know. <laughs> like I, I couldn't tell you. And I've been invested in the story for 90 minutes and I could not tell you what's going you gotta on. You kind of just have to be there for the ride. It's really just like, all it is is an amusement park ride at the end of the day. You're like, that was fun. But I don't know what happened. I was wondering if I was wondering if you caught this. They said something at the beginning of the movie. Uh, oh, if it was them talking, then no, I definitely didn't catch it. I'm it was, no. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. For real, for real. No, that's good. I. She said something that I almost felt like was purposely put there to uh, kind of.
kind of weighed against this criticism because I think he's gotten it before. I think Interstellar got similar criticism. I think like these movies that are mostly positively received. Same with Inception. It, but do you with mean a few detractors? It, do you mean at the beginning when he's like when he's first being explained by the like scientist about everything, where it's basically says, like this isn't going to make sense. You just have to believe it. On yep. those, yeah, and I was like, okay. <laughs> That seemed very much like directed at the audience of mm. like try not to get too invested, which I have mixed feelings about. I think I do like that idea of like cinema just being this thing of like not everything has to make total sense. My only issue with that is like then why do you try to make it make sense? Okay. Like, why have the characters explain things if I'm not supposed to care about I'm gonna it, take you know? I'm gonna take a page out of the great and I say it a lot because it's some it's like my main tenet of a filmmaker <laughs> is that like tenet or tenant? Tenant. Not tenet. tenet. Yeah, no, a tenant. Not a tenant, my tenant for filmmaking. Your tenant. Is if you create a world, the world doesn't have to play by real world laws or real world things but if um, you create a world that everything needs to make sense within the world that you create and it has to be believable that is my one big thing with films and i think at times because of what we talked about there where they explain to you well don't get too lost in like the actual technical aspect of this it's like well you break your own rules throughout the film just for like convenience i guess and that's kind of the part where i'm like Eh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it. I mean, it's not real. So the thing is, like, you, you know, painstakingly created the rules to your own fictional universe, and then you go out of your way to not follow them, or there are things that don't add up, and it's just kind of like, if that's going to be the case, I would rather have you just set vague, more vague rules, like less, more broad rules, so that it can kind of fit a little better instead of making these super specific guidelines and then yeah. not following them. Yeah. You know? So for your like oh. example, the one rule that I think is so everybody, when they go backwards is wearing an oxygen mask, right? So at the end or not the end, but close to it, when cat goes back to the boat, isn't she actually inverted at that point? Wouldn't that be the only way that she's seeing herself? Wouldn't she have to be inverted? Yeah. Then she's not then right there. Like she, she's not wearing. So, so right. uh, there's two of them there. And I would think like, she's like the only way for her to see herself is because she's going back. So why isn't she wearing an oxygen mask? That's the one part that I, that kind of lost me there. I was just looking to see if somebody had talked about this online. So I'm curious. Um, See, okay, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Somebody on Reddit asked this. And the top answer is, no, she's not inverted. She traveled back in time. Parentheses, inverted during a while. I don't know what that means. And the second sentence says, then she uninverted. And then she moves forward. So it's like, what are we doing here? <laughs> What's going on here? Yeah, I guess. Give me a... Yeah, that's the part. Clear path, you know. It's just it's too much of. Uh... Well, this is the thing we talked about it when we watched the Tomorrow War. That time travel was explained, and it was like ships. So so like if you went backwards, needing an oxygen mask, and then you mean, like reflipped yourself. This isn't this isn't time travel. I I get it, but <laughs> <laughs> but it hurts my head. That's I did you feel dumb because I for a while I was like. Maybe, like, I'm dumb. Like, I was watching it, and I thought, maybe I'm the problem here. And then I looked at the letterbox reviews from people I follow and people whose opinions I trust, and they were all like, this is a good movie, but, like, it doesn't make any sense. I, I'm, you know? like, I'm going to be honest with you. I credit myself with, like, being, like, above average as far as, like, intellect. Like, I understand, like, I've been around the block. Like, I get things. I understand things. I don't know. I guess I. I guess I'm dumb too because certain times it just We're didn't make sense. I kind of like I couldn't follow it, and that's one of the times we talked about. Is like how was she not? We never saw her come back through. We're movie guys. We watched. 
I would say that we're cinephiles mm-hmm. in the in the you know in the definition of that word. We watch a lot of different kinds of movies and have over the span of this show, and we'll keep doing. Like we watched Butter on the Latch last week. That's a movie that is also, I would say, more cerebral and more of a, an experimental kind of film. That maybe some things are purposely vague. Um, I didn't have a hard time following that. Like once it was laid out for me, even though it was experimental, it made sense. Yeah, and but that this film. Is a more, this is a more narrative-driven film, so logic would dictate that this should be easier to follow. Yeah, it's just not. Although, I will say, this is partially on me because I have a hard time with spy movies in general. Like, I have a hard... I like spy movies, but I have a hard time a lot of times when there's, like, an abundance of characters. And when there's all these internationals, like, oh, we're in Kiev, and now we're in uh, this place, and now we're in that place. And we met this dictator, and now we're working with this locksmith, and there's, like, you know, 25 new characters, like, introduced throughout the movie. I do have difficulty following films like this generally. Yeah. So it's probably doesn't help that this one also has a convoluted time travel element. No, too. and I definitely agree with you there. And I guess I differ because like I love spy movies. I grew up watching all of the James Bond films. So like I like spy movies. So that's cool and I could follow it. I think the problem was is that I tried to like turn up the audio and I know we're going like, and this is a like. I know I'm going to keep on saying this, but it's a real problem because yeah. when because when you're tr- like, if you want to make all of the like explosions and the waves and kind of like the external sound louder, that's fine. But when you're traveling to all of these places and our main character is meeting all of these people that play a minor role, very minor role in setting up things, when you have a lot of these minor like roles and you can't hear two out of four of them, you're missing 50% of the information and it's hard to catch back up. And that was one of the biggest things is I had the volume up loud, but then all of a sudden, especially when they're on the boat, when they're first talking, when they are talking, you can hear the waves smacking that boat so loudly that you can't hear anything of what they're saying. And that is a critical point in that film to understand that with, you know, uh, what's going on. So like, if you're going to have a dialogue heavy film, where you need to know uh, what's going on, you can't have all of these other noises going on. And I like obviously I'm not the only one because it's one of the biggest things that people have complained about. Well, it was it was a problem in theaters, and that's my big thing is this is also a movie designed to be seen in theaters. Like this is a blockbuster film. Uh, but imagine seeing this in theaters and not having the benefit of subtitles, of being able to pause the film for a minute and take a bathroom break or get a drink or something not having the benefit of having the Wikipedia page pulled up to follow along in case you miss something. I think I would have been hopeless seeing this in theaters. I, like I, I would have gotten the gist, uh, but I do, I think that I understand it a little more just based on yeah. being able to have the subtitles on and follow along with the plot. So, so now that, so, so now that you bring that up, I think that's partly my fault is I normally watch films with subtitles on to follow them better. But since I wasn't at my house watching this film, I did not have the subtitles on. And that's probably why I'm having such a hard time with it, because I normally will watch films with subtitles on so I can at least like understand it a little bit more and get the dialogue and understand where they're at. But in this situation, I had no subtitles at all. So that's you shouldn't you shouldn't have to, though, is the thing. I mean, you know, it's a personal preference. But if, again, if you were to go see this in movies, mm-hmm. this came out and you were like, oh, first movie, you know, back after the pandemic, I'm going to go see Tenet. You know, you would expect to not have subtitles and you'd expect to be able to hear the audio. BT uh, saw so. this movie at a drive in and I'm wondering oh and I'm wondering how bad that was. I gotta talk to him. Now I didn't really talk to him a lot when he but he went and saw this at a drive in and I can only imagine our radio. How bad that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I that's that's weird too because I mean that is a technical component of the film you know like that is not us coming in with like an objective or a subjective rather like oh I didn't like the way that this plot element worked or I wasn't a fan of this that's us that's us agreeing with a lot of people that objectively have said there's a technical issue with this film so like we make you know? our own content now like we make our own stuff 
we're far from being able to produce a film that has a two hundred thousand or a two whatever it was two two hundred million dollar budget or whatever it was. We're far we're far from it. But at least I know when you're like mastering stuff, if you're like, wow, that wave sound is way above the dialogue, I should probably lower that. Well, wait until people see season two because <laughs> Gonna make sure you can't hear anything. I just don't get that part. It's like, how are you watching that and going, yeah, the levels are great. Like, well, especially when there's that many people involved. When it's that big of a project, how does somebody not notice that and go, mm, seems like I can't hear shit. Yeah, I just, <laughs> in it's this just, movie. that's like one thing. And it's like, even now, the one thing that you talk about, even as a small or in- independent, like, creator, independent filmmaker, is like, the one thing that is unforgivable, they tell you this right at the start. Anything you read, anything, anything you watch, us, us been doing this now for almost a year. The one thing that you cannot get us like a pass on is sound quality. You can't. And it's funny we're saying that. I know that we've had some sound issues and this podcast, but hey, you know, <laughs> this, this yeah, isn't a two hundred uh, million dollar podcast. Now though, this isn't a two hundred million dollar podcast. <laughs> Calm it down. I gotta get it. I gotta get a Christopher Nolan quality webcam next. I can match my my new audio. Where you look like you're <laughs> in a dream. <laughs> um, Looking at you through a mirror. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think this is a. Here's I guess here's my other my one other issue. Uh, while we're getting it all out there, while we're airing our grievances about the. Uh, technical masterpiece that is tenant um it's a it's written to be a, it's a smart film uh but there is no chance that even smart people are gonna f- make sense of it like there's no person that just has this movie all figured out nobody wa- nobody is like smart enough to watch this by design i don't think that i don't think the logic is there for us there's a for there to be a smart enough person to watch this and be like I understand everything that happened. Uh, so it is like written like a smart movie, but it is a dumb movie in mm-hmm. reality. It is a big blockbuster high concept film that's very cool and it's meant to be seen in the theater. It's a dumb movie. And I think there's yeah. something about like accepting that and, and embracing that and, you know, enjoying a big dumb blockbuster movie. Uh, you know, it doesn't need to try to explain the laws of thermodynamical physics to me. Uh, you know, I could just be like, oh, they time travel. That's enough for me. There is one thing um, that I want to point out with like, <clears throat> I got to like, one thing I'm going to give them credit on again is how big this production was. It was filmed in over seven countries and involving a crew for just the filming, just a film crew of over two, 250 people. Like, this is a crazy, geez crazy amount of people that, that that were involved in just like the principal filming of this. Yeah. And then you talk about like over a hundred different vessels that were used in the making of this film. Like you got to give Nolan credit for managing and directing a film of this scale. Like no matter how well you end up feeling about this film with its good and bad parts. And even if you're listening to this going, this film was a piece of shit. You have to give Nolan credit for not only writing this film and then not directing it, but also like managing and directing this intense of a filming like schedule and intense of a, yeah. like all of like managing all of these countries, all these people, all these move, moving parts. I mean, he has a great crew. I mean, a lot of that's crew and you have people in charge for like a reason, but you can't not give him credit for that. Like you have to. Yeah, Definitely. How did you feel about the reveals? Did you see things coming? I didn't really see anything as like a reveal, so I must have saw it coming. Like, what are you like? What are you talking about? So, like, for example, there was two that I caught, and then two that I didn't. So, like, at the very beginning, when the soldier that he doesn't know who the soldier is, like at the opera house, grabs him or whatever, I immediately was like, "That's gonna be him going back." I did not think that it was gonna be him at the airport. Mm-hmm. when he goes back and ends up like fighting himself so that was that caught me and then uh, once again i think so uh, so uh so i was the opposite i didn't catch the beginning but i figured when he pulled the mask off 
and was like, like, end. like he knew to keep it a secret. So that's, I guess we were flipped right. on that one. And then the other one would be that I did, whenever Robert Pattinson Neil says, um, I'll tell you, know, why does it matter who hired me? I'll tell you later. I was like, okay, that's clearly mm-hmm. going to be him. Yep. But I did not see the thing of like, he is apparently the head of Tenet in the future. Yeah, I didn't. And I didn't see. The, I didn't see that one coming. But I guess it makes sense. I didn't anticipate that. Yeah, I. I do like. I do like the ending in the sense that I like that he gave her the, like the radio, the walkie-talkie, mm-hmm. and is able to be there. And like, I like that that paid off. Like she was in danger, and the whole like, oh, it's probably nothing. And then, you know, he was able to. So all I'm going to say is, is that I know it's not going back in time, but if he goes back in time to meet Robert Pattinson to help him and. No, Jimmy, no, (laughs) Jimmy, no, he introverted. Listen, he introverted while Robert Pattinson reverted. And then they at the same time. They meet in the middle because you can't talk because you can't talk. If you're inverted and somebody's not, you can't talk to them because it's backwards. And they showed that during the film. He did. So I'm having absolutely. You're absolutely right. None of this shit makes sense. We're here to tell you that Tenet is a pretty okay movie that is uh, mostly fun to watch visually. uh, That is confusing and has issues. But if you like stuff like this, if you like Inception, if you like Interstellar, there's no. If you like Christopher Nolan stuff, there, you're gonna like this. You're gonna. I mean, hopefully you're. You know, you walk out of it and are able to just kind of shake off the. Well, that didn't make any sense, but uh, it is very cool to just see a movie with an original concept like this um, be made on the level of like a Marvel film or something like that. So uh, that's cool, and uh, the visuals definitely you know, rival something like a Marvel film. Uh, it's maybe even more impressive because it's got a little touch of realism to it, you know, um, in the sense that it's, I don't know why I'm saying that there's people walking backwards and shit, but it's, <laughs> but it's not people in costumes flying around. So it feels, um, you know, I hope, grounded in some kind of reality. Like, I don't know if our path is going to take us to ever be able to produce or see something on like this grand of a scale, but I would love to see the conversation about like, I'm shutting your whole highway down. (laughs) Right. Like everything is closed now. Like I am bringing in a crew and this whole highway is getting shut down. Like, I would just love to see that. This is not the podcast to talk about it. And, uh, we are getting to about that time at the end of the show, but Mm -hmm. that happened to me yesterday. We went, uh, I was at a buddy's house, and we were in Mill Village, uh, which is about 10 minutes out of town from where uh, my parents live, and we drove into Waterford, uh, which is the town over, to get uh, gas and some beer and some food, and they were blocked off from halfway into town all the way into Erie. The road was blocked off. No idea what was going on. Didn't even look like it was cops. Looked like it was people in... Construction vests and like t-shirts and jeans dude something's Didn't going on there because on. when we left filming when we were up there and we left filming they had a whole section of road blocked off again and they were like sorry can't go through here and you're like what and they're Waterford like waterford is turn it's around. starting to feel like the town from stranger things <clears throat> like it's starting to feel like there's some kind of uh it's a weird science experiments going on that year for some reason had the little caesars closed on a sunday <laughs> everything was <laughs> everything was closed yesterday too we couldn't couldn't get food anywhere we couldn't get beer anywhere and i know that it, today's labor day i didn't think that things would be closed on sunday so we get a whole odyssey maybe we'll talk about it on shooting the bit uh, yeah because some things happen but that being said that's our discussion at tenet uh i think my judgment on this one you know if you agree uh jimmy would be that you probably already know whether you're gonna like this movie or not um I mean, like, I I can't picture somebody who doesn't like Christopher Nolan seeing this and having this be the movie that changes their mind. Uh, But if you like what he does, this is more of that, and it's done well, and I think you're going to enjoy it. So I would just kind of follow your gut. I I agree with you 100%. This is also the first podcast that we've done where I didn't wear a hat, so that's exciting. Wow. Wow. And I'd like Those to, YouTube views are going to come right back up. Right, right back up. And I'd like to give <laughs> a shit. Parentheses, Jimmy, Jimmy head reveal. 
Uh, and as always, I'd like to give a shout out to our Patreon members, Jay Irvin and Dylan Painter. Thank you so much. We love you guys. And uh, we really appreciate your uh, being a Patreon member. If you'd like to join them, pay patreon.com slash Lomo Media. Plenty of tiers. We don't need to get into it. Go over and check it out. Lots of good stuff there, especially with season two on the horizon. Go on and want to check those nice, sweet, sweet blooper reels. Absolutely. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you to the Patreon members. Definitely uh, check that out if you're interested in more. Um, we are coming up on some really cool interviews um, with some some independent filmmakers um, that are in the area. Uh, actually, our, our next At the Movies episode following this week's will be um, an independent feature along with uh, the, the filmmaker themselves talking to us uh, about their movie. So um, tune in for that. That's going to be super cool. And at the end of this season, we're just going to keep plugging away so you'll get Two more directors, and we'll, we'll, we would love to hear in the comments uh, who you would like to see us cover, or movies that you'd like to see us cover on after the movies. Mm-hmm. Um, I would also say I would encourage people to, uh, we're definitely trying to grow the podcast right now, so um, the best way for, for us uh, is a share. Um, it is word of mouth. If you like the show, tell a friend. Uh, and it is also, if you happen to use Apple and you give us a five-star review, that would be lovely and wonderful and we'll keep an eye on it and we would be happy to read those on the podcast. Um, it would really appreciate it. It would help us out a lot. So, uh, yeah, tune in on, on Thursday. This is actually, wow, Jimmy, I should have spun this from the beginning. This is the introverted tenant week mm-hmm. of the podcast. The introverted. Why didn't I just think of that? That, that would have been inverted. way smarter. You mean inverted. The, the inverted. The <laughs> introvert. No, uh, the intro- I meant what I said. Uh, the introverted one is just me and you staring at each other and being like, I don't want to do for the podcast. I don't, I, don't want, I don't want Christopher Nolan to get upset with me. What if um, I don't who? Christopher, oops. Who? Who? I, don't, I don't want to hurt his feelings. All right. Let's uh, so we're, we're going to watch Resolution. Uh, Resolution, streaming on Prime. Directed by Justin Benson and Aaron Scott Moorhead. Mm. It is a wild ride. Jimmy and I actually haven't even talked about it together yet, so nope. I don't want to spoil uh, feelings on it, but it is definitely a wild ride. Um, unlike anything you'll ever see, you might love it, you might hate it, but it's interesting. Uh, kind of yep. like this film. So uh, check that out and um, shooting the bit next week. So, yeah. Season that's two it. on the way. Season two. That's, that's... all we got. All right. Oh, we didn't even. This is after the movies. Oh, yeah. We never opened the bar. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait. We got, what we got to do is we got to go in the turnstile at the yeah. same time. Mm. Then go back and we're going to shoot, 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 shoot. Whoop, 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 whoop. And we're going to open the bar retroactively. Mm-hmm. Bar's open. Uh, so Robert Pattinson shows up at the bar normal we gotta go we gotta go back through though now since we went through to open the bar now we gotta go back through we're going back through again close it yep and then and here we are back Uh, we're back to them coming into the bar are we letting them in or do you think christopher nolan denzel washington's kid and robert pattinson show up um what do you think i think one more drink Christopher, let's see here. Christopher and Nolan has to sit in a booth. He can't sit at the bar, but everybody's welcome in. He's nobody's allowed to talk about the plot of this movie. Yeah. If they do, as long as they don't talk about what's or going Ince- on this movie. or the ending of Inception. <laughs> yes. Yep. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about it. Don't get him started. All right. Well, we had him in. Time to get him out. Let's go forward in time and get these get these folks out of our bar. Uh, and that includes you, listener. Get out of our bar. Get out. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.